Hi guys, welcome back. This video is about the biggest epoxy pour I've ever done. It's a multi-color pour. So I poured one color, etched out the pattern for the second color, and then I poured the second color. So I'm gonna dive into this project. This is, I alluded to this project in the last video where I was showing a bunch of things I did with the CNC. So we're going to expand and dive into this one project. So I drew this in SketchUp. This was a like a logo or crest for a school. And so I thought this would be a good project to try out my new CNC machine. Uh, the problem is I didn't know if a wood inlay would be better or epoxy. And so to figure that out, I did just a small mock-up version of each kind to see what I like and maybe show it to the school and see what they like. They had given me a little bit of creative license with it, but, but it's nice to have like a real life example of what it would look like. So, so here I'm just showing making these mock-ups uh, real quick. And so... This is obviously the epoxy mock-up. I took a maple board and just CNC'd out a pocket for the epoxy, leaving kind of that maple frame. Uh, poured it with white, whitish silver epoxy, uh, CNC'd it out, and then uh, got this, this color green, which really wasn't even the right green, but it's just some green that I had around to try this out. So at this point, I was really liking this epoxy mock-up. Uh, this was only the second time I had ever done a project with epoxy and it was working out pretty good. But I also had high hopes for the wood inlay one. So that's what the epoxy mock-up looked like. Uh, and I didn't shoot video of it for some reason, but this is the, the male and the female part of this inlay. Uh, I did the male part in maple and then that's walnut there on the background. So I thought that kind of stark contrast of the wood would look good. Uh, and it did, it, and it fit really good. The CNC did a great job, and the, the Vectric program that has actually a setting for that. <clears throat> and so we just planed it off and finished it. So I presented both of these to the school and some other people to get their opinions, and it was a little mixed, but epoxy won the day on that. The, the wood was awesome, though. It almost looked too perfect. Uh, the epoxy just just popped a little more with the colors. So that's the way we went. So here we are with the big boy, the real thing, uh, just laying out six quarters maple boards. So in other words, they're an inch and a half after they're planed. Uh, there's the design that I drew up in SketchUp, uh, which obviously I translated into Vectric for the CNC. But so we dominoed this together and just edge glued these boards. Uh, the dominoes are great, it helps line it up, but it is a little bit of a pain because you gotta make sure and miss those uh, when you cut out the profile. Here's the back, uh, I just etched in, I had a kind of an idea for some custom hardware to hang this. And so I had a steel company bend some two part brackets and they actually worked really good, but I wanted to etch out the back so it would sit closer to the wall. And here we are just starting to run this program of just etching out that pocket where the epoxy is gonna be poured. And here's me, I'm just really excited about this thing to start it. It is kind of exciting. It's, it's cool to make something really big like this. So we just kind of switched to ultra high speed here. So it's completing like the first pass or the first depth, which is was probably like three eighths or something. Now it's carving another three eighths because I think it was a three quarter inch pour, I believe. Uh, so you can see the dominoes are all exposed there, but that's fine. They've done their job. Everything is set and glued now. All right, guys, I think I'm ready to rock and roll on this epoxy pour. I've got six gallons of Deep Pour X Moss Epoxy ready to rock and roll. I've got all kinds of white and green, um, what do they call that, graphite powder, the, <clears throat> the coloring. And got my respirator for both of those things. Uh, a couple big buckets. I calculate this is probably at least five gallons. I've got six ready to go. And so that's it. We're going to pour this thing in white, completely in white. And then we're going to let that set up for a day or two, at least. And then we're going to CNC out the pattern of green and then pour that into the white. And that's how we're going to do our multi-color. Uh, and then we'll do our final cutout and finish on the wood part. Uh, I, <clears throat> I left that on there for now because it's easier to clamp uh, the corners that are going to be cut off later. So... A little nervous this is uh between all this maple and all this epoxy it's like literally thousands of dollars if i screw this up so uh wish me luck see you on the other side okay just pouring in all this epoxy 
epoxy is uh, comes in two parts, the, the actual epoxy and then the hardener, which uh, when you combine the two, it starts the chemical process of hardening it. It's when the magic happens. So I, I think this was a two to one epoxy to hardener ratio. And I didn't show it, but I mixed up the uh, the actual epoxy for a couple minutes before I actually added the coloring. I don't know if that's necessary, but it seemed like the right way to do it. Okay, so now the fun part. Uh, and for obvious reasons, I have to pour this on a completely uh, level surface. And so the CNC table works really good for that because it's completely level. And not only that, I can uh, easily clamp down that board and make sure it stays flat. So I'm torching off all the bubbles and I babysit these things for a while and, and torch the new bubbles as they come. But at this point I was thinking this white is really, really plain looking and not even that bright white. Later. All right, so here we are with this giant logo. We got our first pour done in what was supposed to be pure white, but it looks kind of dirty. I don't really like it that much. There's, there's like no marbling, no texture. It's just like a dirty white. When we poured it, there was a slight shrinkage, light, slight shrinkage. Why can't I say that, Trey? I don't know. <laughs> slight shrinkage uh, on the epoxy and actually like a little bit leaked out the bottom somehow. So anyway, long story short, we got about an eight, like if you put a straight edge across the top here, uh, it's, it's sunk down about an eighth, which would have been acceptable. We could work with that. but. That gives me the room to uh, do a, another coat. And so <clears throat> I went from pure white, which I got just for this project, back to, where is it? Um, silver white, which is what I used in the mock-up that we did. And so, um, which I like better than this one as far as the white color. So uh, we're gonna use that eighth inch and we're gonna, I got it mixed up right here with the silver white. We're gonna pour that out and see if we can get a little a little, a uh, little more dazzle, a little better looking products. Coat do. By my calculations, we need three quarters of an inch. Yeah, get right in on that. That looks really dazzling. It is a cooler white. It is. It looks cool. And I, I don't know if this is enough. Dang it. That's all of it. I mean, look at that. It almost looks silver down here. Well, that's, the, it's, um, we're gonna, oh, I need something. We'll help it. We'll help it go. I mean, that is so cool, that round. Mm -hmm. It's like a galaxy. the next morning okay good morning it is early the next day um this is um it's pretty hard it's not quite there i can tell uh which is interesting because you know that's like an eighth inch thick but a lot of area and then my extra stuff here is uh you know i don't know inch and a quarter thick or something and that was like solid last night already, like after a couple hours. So um, I'm starting to learn that the, the thickness matters as far as curing time and obviously your ratio and all that. But uh, even more than that maybe is <clears throat> just the volume, the amount of epoxy. So this is a really thin pour, but a lot of epoxy. And it took, you know, several times what that bucket took to cure. So anyways, uh, this looks really good. I like it a lot better than just that pure white I had going. And so I'm glad I skimmed this with the eighth inch. Uh, so we'll probably give this another day and then we will see and see out where the green goes and go from there. I did get a little extra come over. And so I know that planes off. Okay. But, um, I don't have a planer big enough for this piece. So we're going to probably find out how hard it is to sand this off. Back to the fun part of firing up the CNC and we'll run our program to carve into that white. Here's our new white finish. It looked a lot better. Uh, so we're going to carve that out 
uh, to where, for where the green goes. And so CNC is obviously doing that. I don't show anything with the software, but there really is a lot to uh, drawing up these images, writing the tool paths. I think some people think you get a CNC machine and it's just easy from there on out. And it does make some things a lot more possible and accurate and stuff. But you get, there's a lot of work with the software and getting everything ready. And you got to know what you're doing. Uh, incidentally, that white is like that those shavings are the perfect consistency for like fake snow. So it'd be a really expensive way to get fake snow. But I no joke, it was like a pile that is awesome if you happen to need some fake snow. I was using a bigger bit to do uh, all the heavy lifting on that. So most of it was done with a 3 8 bit. Um, just the bigger bits, you know, you can't get into quite so tight of corners. But uh, so I think I ran an eighth inch on the same tool path after that that gets in a little tighter. Uh, so if you look at that up close, there's a, there's like a line like a quarter inch down maybe. Um, we can kind of see where the eighth inch ran. I didn't run it all the way to the full depth because there's going to be epoxy in there. So there's the Hunter Green from Black Diamond uh, Pigments. Incidentally, I'm going to start posting links of a lot of these products in my description uh, so people can find a better products and maybe some of the tools. But So this was a lot better green than the... Uh, than what we used in the mock-up in that it was, you know, it's a, it was a better match for the school. So, uh, got this all mixed up, had to calculate. It's hard to calculate sometimes those patterns, exactly what it's going to take. So I'm going to take the big bucket and pour it in the little bucket, uh, because I can manage it a little better. I can kind of squeeze, squeeze the sides and funnel it in. Uh, but this is pretty easy. So the, the epoxy that's carved out kind of forms a mold for you, obviously. Uh, and this is this video is really sped up. I'm actually pouring it very slow uh, because it'll it'll fill in and it'll find its own level. But it's you know it's not like water. It's a lot thicker, a lot more viscous. So you just gotta give it some time to to get to get there and level out. Pretty satisfying to watch though. Here's the completed epoxy with the green just newly poured in there so just i mean it looks dynamite the contrast uh the the sheen and everything looks good and now you can see the epoxy looks very dull and not good and the reason for that is because i sanded it so i had to sand uh all the epoxy that kind of flowed over onto the wood and so i started with the low grits went right up through the high grits like i've seen other people doing uh, but before I polished it, I wanted to get some lacquer on the wood because I was afraid if I got some of that polish on the wood, it might do something weird. So I wanted to seal the wood, and now I'm coming back to polish it. And so th this 3M product I heard is really good, and I have an actual buffer and everything. And so kind of went through the stages as prescribed, and I didn't have a, a lot of luck with the with this part of it and so i think it's because my sanding process just wasn't meticulous enough i think i made some too deep of scratches with the lower grits and just never got those completely out so the it looks good when you put the polish on it and it shines it up uh but then when it would dry it just it, it didn't look that great and i could still see some of the scratches so my solution for that was to kind of clean any residue from the polish off and just top coat it and so that's kind of a solution you can put a top coat of epoxy on top of epoxy and it'll just fill in the scratches and you'll never know it so uh, that's what i did to to solve my problem but before that top coat i wanted to get the piece cut out and so i was running a 3 8 bit which should have been able to handle it i just think this hard maple is too much anyways i broke a bit and i never turned the camera back on but basically i had to just do shallower passes and i had to make the the shield a little smaller so here comes the top coat which is also moss epoxy it's just literally their top coat product and just spreading it out by hand just making sure it gets to all the edges and it will kind of level itself too but it it helps to kind of break the edges and push it around it's always fun when you can just do something by hand like that it's kind of like you're in kindergarten again Okay, we're almost there, guys. So this is the finished, finished, finished product, at least on the face. 
And so I had to, I flipped it over and put a coat on the back too, just to kind of seal everything and help the wood, you know, be stable. And here's my brackets for holding them on the wall. It's a two part bracket. So there's one bracket on the piece here, and then there'll be uh, kind of a sister piece that goes on the wall. They hook together. Um, you probably saw there's like white shavings coming out when I'm drilling this. Uh, that's because I, I don't think I have much more than a quarter inch of wood there. And then I'm in the epoxy, but the epoxy is cured and it'll hold a screw too. But I really just wanted to do everything I can to, to make this secure. Uh, and so I, I'm gluing it as well. So glue and a lot of screws. Um, I've made these brackets before. The headboard video I made a long time ago, I used like a heavy duty version of these two. They usually work really good. And the pocket was just the right depth so they can just fit tight against the wall. Yeah. Okay, it's going for real. Okay. All right. Today's a big day. It's me and Colton. Yeah. And we're getting ready to do something big here. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know what that's going to be, but it's going to involve that logo going on that wall. So stick around. Here we go. We'll give it a shot. So Mark is up there fastening the wall side of the brackets. Uh, we're just using tap cons for those and they just have to be spaced perfectly so that both of those will engage together. Uh, so here's the fun part of holding this big freaking heavy thing uh, and just adjusting and adjusting and trying to make sure that both of those are catching. You can see I'm using a flashlight. There's somebody on the balcony just trying to look behind there and just confirm that both of those are engaged and seated properly. Uh, Finally, I was uh, satisfied that they were. So, uh, and then this guy came and stood in front of my camera. So anyways, that's the, uh, that's the logo, crest, shield, whatever. That project is done. Thanks for watching.